we've got this setup here and uh, there's this area that is increasing over time um, and there's a wire with a current here it's got a magnetic field that's not exactly uh, consistent over here we have a smaller field over here it's a larger field so it's a variable field and uh, so that's going to cause some problems for this issue. Um, we've got a whole bunch of different questions we're going to answer. Uh, the first one is the induced EMF in the wire that's going around here as the area is expanding. Now, in order to find the induced EMF, that's just going to be the negative time derivative, or you could take the, mag the magnitude, but that would be the flux. So the goal is actually first to find the flux. So let's let's focus on that. Um, the flux is just going to be a b cosine theta. Now the cool thing is this thing is just going to go away. It's just going to be one because it's pointing out of the page, and you know, so it's it's just going to cancel out. So we can focus on this, and well, uh, we have a long strip of wire here. Um, so the cool thing is we actually know what the magnetic field is for a long strip of wire. That would be just mu naught i divided by uh, 2 pi, and it would be some distance away from it. So, you know, wherever you are here, that would be kind of your r distance. It would be different, though. So we're going to have an issue with, uh, with that. And then we can look at the a. So we kind of have a variable here in the B magnetic field. So if we could somehow get this A in terms of this variable, that'd be amazing. Well, the good thing is the variable is in the Y direction here. And so perhaps we can work with, um, you know, if we were going to try to get a DA going here, then we can probably put that in terms of like a DR or something, right? So the cool thing is, if we were to try to make an area out of this, this would be like the length x, and then if you have a very small distance in this way, then that would be the dr. So you could represent this area by saying x, and this would be a function of x and time, by the way, because this will grow with time, so it's a function of x in terms of time here. Um, time the dr there, and you would want to integrate from uh, here, which is going to be essentially 0 0.01 meters, until over here, which is 0 0.11 meters. It's going to be 10 centimeters, and this is going to be uh, 10 millimeters away. So that's how we can create this area um, with that expression right there. And now we've got our dr, so that's really nice. So all we just got to do is multiply those two things together and um, integrate. In order to solve this, let's go ahead and just slap the D on both sides here. We know that the D is going to go with the A here because that's the thing that's changing, not the B. And so we'll just replace that in there and we'll be able to integrate this. So the flux is equal to the integral um, of the B, which is mu naught I divided by 2 pi R, and then times the DA, which is going to be X in terms of T and the dr. Now we're just integrating over r, so all this stuff is essentially constant. We're just going to pull it out. So we'll get mu naught i over, and here's the x of t, over 2 pi integrated. Um, we could put their integration limits from 0 0.01 to 0 0.11, and that would be 1 over r dr. That's a really easy integral. It's just going to be ln of r going from 0 0.11 to 0 0.01. This is essentially going to equal ln of 0 0.11 minus the ln of 0 0.01. And uh, we could put those together. So you'd essentially get ln of 0 0.11 divided by 0 0.01 being the answer to that integral. So uh, that's that. And then you're going to multiply that by this. So the flux is zero. Mu naught i x of t over the two pi, and here's the ln of zero. Uh, all that good stuff. 
We're not done yet, though. We haven't even gotten started with, with the first one. <laughs> we actually need to uh, take the time derivative of this. So it's very handy that we have the d that the x uh, of t there, because um, the time derivative of that flux, if we were to take the d over dt of all of this, all of this stuff is constant. So we really just pull that out of the derivative, and we're going to get... Um, that uh, the derivative here, which is going to be the induced EMF, is equal to mu naught i um, over 2 pi times ln of 0 0.11 over 0 0.01. And here comes the derivative, x uh, of t um, over d of t. And, um, well, this is just going to be the velocity, isn't it? And it turns out we're given the velocity, so we can solve this finally. <laughs> So let's just go ahead and plug in mu naught is going to be four e to the negative seven. We got a pi on the bottom there. We'll just get rid of that. So we essentially just have the two on the bottom, and then we'll have the i. The i is going to be hundred amps, and then we'll go ahead and put that times the ln of 0.11 divided by 0 0.01, and we also have the velocity in there times five. So the induced EMF is going to be two point um, 4 e to the negative 4 volts. So we go. Now for the next one, the induced current, well, since we know the EMF that's induced, we actually know that we have another equation for induced current. That's just going to be EI divided by R. So let's plug that into our little equation. We know that R is going to be this thing right here, um, over answer, and we're going to divide that by 0.4. So the induced current is just going to be 0 0.6 milliamps. Uh, the next thing we're going to try is the, the <laughs> energy, thermal energy that is uh, dissipated. So we would want to use the power equation for that one. Um, that's just going to be power is equal to the I squared times the R. But this, this is the, this is going to be the current that's inside of this rod. So we want to make, kind of make a little bit of a distinction here. We just solved for this thing. Let's go ahead and mark that. It's the EMF, the induced current. So we're trying to figure out the power from the induced current. That's just going to be, what was our answer? Now let's square that, and then we'll multiply that by R. Okay, so we got the power that was dissipated being 1.44 negative seven watts uh, for the F. Uh, let's take a look at this current. Um, the current, let's figure out which direction it's going so that we know which direction the force is, is pushing, right? Um, since the area is expanding here, um, then we are gaining flux. We are gaining that magnetic field. So let's counter that by creating magnetic field into the page. And so we would need to have the current going in this direction to create that. So the current would be going upwards this way. This is going to be the uh, induced current. I'm going to put that in blue just to make it a little bit less intense. That's the induced current right there. Um, so if I cross that, remember that the force is going to be I, and then there's like L cross B. So if I try to cross that with the, uh, with this field, it's going to go inwards. So that's kind of where the force is pointing. There's the force. Um, but we also know some other things. These two forces are going to cancel out and we don't really care about the force on this side. So we only really care about like the length of the force going this direction. Because uh, 
If we only want it from one side and we only want it in this direction. So to state that, this direction, remember that direction was dr. So we're going to call that a dr um, if we were to take a df of this. <laughs> uh, the i, this is going to be the induced current still. And the sine situation is going to go away, but we still have the b in there. So uh, we should already know what the B is. We calculated that before. Um, it was this. So we'll go ahead and throw that in there. So we kind of have um, DF equals this IE. And then there's the mu naught I over 2 pi R DR. And if we're doing this R DR integral again, it's going to end up being the same answer that we had over here. So let's just kind of do that real quick. Um, th at this point, we're actually integrating this, right? Um, integrating both sides, getting rid of the D on that side. So now you have the F equals the induced uh, induced current, the mu naught, this I over here. Those two I's are different, by the way. Divide this by the 2 pi. And then this integral is just going to be ln of 0 0.11 divided by 0 0.01. Um, so that should be the force. If we were to try to calculate that. So we can say this is going to be 0 0.6 milliamps times the mu naught is 4 e to the negative 7. And we still have 100 amps. Uh, the pi will go away on the bottom there. And then we'll multiply this by the ln of 0 0.11 divided by 0 0.01. And so we should get the force being equal to 2.88 e to the negative 8 newtons. And for the work, for this type of setup over here, we should know that the, the, the power, the work, is F phi. And so we'll just multiply this by 5. So we should get the work is 1.44 e to the negative 7 watts. <laughs> Crazy.